What's up guys? I have a very short Polestar update for you today regarding the Polestar 02 and what Polestar CEO Thomas Ingolat has said now following on from last week's debut at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. If you want to check out my latest Polestar stock analysis video that I released last night, then check out this video. But now let's look at the latest Polestar 02 news. If you appreciate this content and the shorter than usual intro, then smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with the very latest updates. Now let's get into the latest news. So just yesterday, Polestar boss Thomas Ingolat announced that he wants a production version of the O2 concept. Thomas said that he wants to turn it into an actual production car, saying that my ambition is to make it a production car but that is not easy. You have to respect the complexity. You have to see where the O2 is going. When you've painted a painting, it's always good to let it rest and look at it for a couple of months and still see if it's a good painting. Now the O2 concept was originally released several months ago as just the design prototype. But then the car made its public debut at last week's Goodwood Festival of Speed, debuting the O2 alongside the four-door Polestar 5. The Polestar O2 is actually a two-door convertible variant of the earlier four-door precept concept from 2020. And we know the precept concept is already evolving into the Polestar 5 with a market launch scheduled for 2024. If the Polestar 02 gets greenlit for production, it will most likely share the same body panels and interior with the Polestar 5. But importantly, it will probably share the same dual motor electric powertrain, which will produce a combined 870 brake horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque. So we are talking about an incredible sports car, not only incredible to look at, but also incredibly powerful. And in the past 24 hours, there have been some reviews about this stunning vehicle by some global channels who have been able to get up close with the O2 and see it in person, so check this out. This is the Polestar 02, the company's new drop-top sports car concept. Its job is to be the best, most exciting, most emotive product the company might one day develop. The O2 is a hardtop convertible which is based on the same platform as the Precept concept, which has now gone on to become the Polestar 5 in production form. The name O2, in case you're wondering, signifies oxygen, which shows this car's very close connection to the air around us. It doesn't have any tailpipes, it doesn't contribute to pollution, and also because it's a convertible, it gives a very close connection between the driver and passengers and the air that we breathe. Clearly, they've thought long and hard about the design because the O2 is gorgeous to look at as was the Precept. This though is a low, wide sports car with a long wheelbase. In an industry that seems to have a preference to churn out derivative electric crossovers and SUVs, this is very much in a class of its own. And there are some notable similarities between the O2 and the Precept, particularly with these dual blade LED lights, which look very similar to the arrows on the Polestar logo here finished in body color. You might have noticed there is a passing resemblance to the Thor's hammer LED you find on Volvos, except here, the elements are separated by a layer of body color, which symbolizes Polestar and Volvo moving in their own separate directions. This area down here is what's called the smart zone, and this is what houses the car's various sensors to facilitate level four autonomous driving and the various driver assistance systems. So they include things like cameras and radar. The rest of the car is almost completely smooth at the front, apart from what I'd call a set of air curtains at the side, which contribute to the car's overall aerodynamic efficiency, and this quite delightful pinstripe at the lower edge which runs the entire circumference of the car. From the side it's incredibly sleek. With the metal folding hardtop in place it has a dramatic sloping roof that arrows downwards almost diagonally incorporating an LED charge meter on the C-pillar. 
There's the familiar Polestar technical writing on the side, hinting at Polestar's new bonded aluminium chassis. It has a set of highly technical looking 22 inch wheels, behind which you'll find the same Akebono brakes supplied on the Polestar 1. But that's not this car's only party trick. Polestar has imagined that the O2 could come with an integrated drone. Push a button on the screen and this drone could deploy along a landing strip before taking off to capture pictures and videos as you drive. Once its flight is complete, it could land and allow you to edit that footage on the car's display for sharing on social media. Unlikely? Yes. Cool? Absolutely. Okay, let's take a look at the back. So the area above the wheel arch is super muscular, as you might expect from a sports car. It really does look the part. As for the back end itself, it's fairly minimalist, but I do love the way the material curves just underneath these rear lights and just above the bumper. Obviously it has no exhaust pipes because it's all electric, but you do get a sense of this car's intended performance levels based on the size of that enormous rear diffuser. The rear lights, very much inspired by the Precept with a nice thin LED blade running the entire width. And it has these vertical elements on either side, which look cool, but also provide a useful function. These help to minimize the vortices coming off the back of the car in order to reduce drag. Polestar is very big on sustainability. In fact, they're one of the very few manufacturers who are very open about admitting exactly how much CO2 their cars produce during the manufacturing process. And they suggest that the entire industry need to get better at making more sustainable cars. What tends to happen is that in most vehicles they use plastic, cloth, leather, and bond all these materials together to create their interiors which means their interiors aren't very recyclable. But with the O2, Polestar have started using a thermoplastic mono material for all of their interior soft touch components, which means all of it is far more recyclable than other cars. And in fact, they have a target of making sure all their cars are entirely carbon neutral by the year 2030. Now, this is a concept, so I can't actually get inside, but I can show you around and it's a great looking interior, isn't it? It's a two plus two which means you have two full-size seats at the front and two smaller seats at the back intended for people who are either children or vertically challenged. But because the car has a nice long wheelbase, there's actually quite a bit of leg room in the front, which means that front passenger seat can be slid quite a ways forward, leaving a little bit of leg room for taller passengers in the rear. As for the rest of it, you've got a nice flat dashboard, flat topped, flat bottom steering wheel, floating armrest, floating center console, the vertically oriented tablet display powered by Google, and of course, these screens which are connected to the cameras for the wing mirrors. Overall, it's a gorgeous piece of interior design and it's sustainable too. Powertrains and batteries are unconfirmed at this stage. It is just a concept after all, and we have no idea if or when Polestar will build the L2. What we do know is that this company has form. When it showed off its Precept concept, that very quickly became the Polestar 5, which is currently in development. Here's hoping then that the O2 follows a similarly speedy path to reality. So guys, what do you think of that? I know this video is not my usual video where I focus on a company stock, but check out this video that I made last night for more details on the stock. I just thought that this is an incredible looking EV and the idea that it might go into production too is an exciting idea. This news was released on Friday and, the, and in general the market responded well to it with the stock gaining roughly 10% from the morning low to finish the day at 9.53. Drop a comment and let me know what you think of the O2 and if you appreciate this content then smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter.